Hi, I'm Patty. I'm Kim Michelle. And I'm Jill. Welcome to our podcast. It's a great day to talk. Because honestly, what day isn't a great day to talk? So join us in our conversation. A great day to talk is brought to you by St. George Design. Offering complete website design, social media management, search engine optimization, Google and Facebook ad management, and many other digital and print marketing services. StGeorgeDesign.com And by Richardson Brothers Custom Homes, third generation builders who have been building custom homes in southern Utah for over 25 years. They will take your dream home from concept to completion. Contact RichardsonBrothers.com Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to A Great Day to Talk. I'm Kim Michelle, and I'm here with my very, very, very dear friends, Miss Patty. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and Miss Jill. Sup. Sup. <laughs> Sup, dog. <laughs> what? <laughs> I do not even know what that was right there. It's S Except my dear friend. UP. Miss mm-hmm. Jill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dog. (laughs) Anyway, welcome to our podcast today. So much to get through and um, be thankful for and to discuss and talk about. So we're just going to launch right in because that's what we do. We're three friends. We've known each other for a very long time. It's hard to imagine that we got together when we were like three or four years old right. and we just stayed Same. together every since. We have to thank our parents <laughs> for, for for being neighbors. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and we want to welcome everyone who might be joining us on Facebook Live. Thank you for that. If you have any comments, we'd love to see them as we go along the program. Uh, we'll be looking up there to see what you have to add to the conversation and um the rest of you we hope you're joining us on wherever you're listening to your favorite podcasts so we're going to start with jumping right into introducing our book for the month of october so as you may have recognized with september we've changed our format just a little bit on our book so we're going to continue to introduce a book we're going to read it together And we're going to continue to put some posts up about it and check and see where you are on the book. And then when we continue to have our conversation at the end of the month on it, we're going to take some of the themes from the book and then discuss those themes more so than the actual kind of storyline around the book. Because we want to make sure that if people didn't have a chance to actually read the book, that they can still enjoy the conversation as it relates to the podcast. Is that right, ladies? I love it. Yes. Check. Because I know um, my husband said, oh, I turned the podcast on, but you guys were talking about a book I hadn't read. (laughs) <laughs> and I said, oh, well, we actually talk more about other things, the themes around the book and, oh, and how they connect. events and how they connect to yeah. our lives today. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like, oh, OK. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. There so you come go. back, Riley. Come yeah. Back. yeah. Come back. All of you come on back. So if, for example, you missed the conversation last week on American Dirt, which was our book for the month of September. We had a really great conversation just around immigration and more so even what to what extent would you go to save your child or what risk would you put them in even if it meant saving your child. So even though those are in the book, it really is themes of the book and that's what we discussed and we didn't really go through a lot of the storyline right Mm -mm. but hopefully even just having that conversation those of you who maybe didn't read the book would be maybe inspired to go back and read the book because we're huge fans of literature and any way we can you know kind of get that into your hands we're happy to do that yeah well and there there weren't too many spoilers from us no huh? in the book no we, yeah we didn't really talk about how it all ended no and even if i mean even if we had yeah you we reading can't spoil it is so it that different much. yeah no 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 <laughs> you mean reading it is mm-hmm. better than listening to us talk about it well they're not there's no reason to compare 
<laughs> they're both an experience all to there themselves. You so you would want to do both. There you right. go. There Very you go. Diplomatic. So we would love to introduce you to this month's book. And actually, we're going to um, spread the wealth a little bit because this book has lots of opportunity for sharing. So we're going to actually let this be the book for October and November because there's a lot going on for us. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, and I think just this time of year, I mean, we're into all the holidays. Yep. And the end of the quarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for my uh, college class, they are in the depth of writing. So there will be several more essays before December. Yeah. And so our thinking was that that if we are coming up for fall break, for example, then that means that a lot of moms and a lot of dads out there, that means that you're probably going to have kiddos home for their fall break, which means that you might not have your luxurious time where you have nothing to do because your kids are at school. <laughs> right. <laughs> nothing to do. Right. Exactly. Right. And so you might not have as much reading time. And then you're going to have your holidays in uh, November. And so we're going to have this be October and November's book so that you can really savor uh, the book. So here we go. The book ready is. To announce? Yes. The book is, and this is quite a title. So the book is Cloud Cuckoo Land. Now, that's not my house. That's not the name of my house. That's the that's what I call my brain. Yeah. <laughs> that's so great. That's exactly right. Right. So, uh, we're not, uh, we're not going to give you a whole bunch of information about the book except to say that uh, it is by one of uh, an author that we love, mm -hmm. Anthony Dewar, who is the author of All the Light We Cannot See. Oh, and so, we which so is a great book. Mm -hmm. We and so it was loved a this book. Prize winner too. Oh, mm -hmm. yep. I did not know that, mm -hmm. but that just means we have fabulous taste. Mm -hmm. So that book followed Deaf or bl Blind. Deaf or she blind. was blind. She was blind. blind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Girl and, and during the war and World War II. Uh, World War mm -hmm. II and a German soldier and their well re not relationship like right. that you know what right. i mean but right. right yeah yeah it was how they come to know each other yes and how they exactly what the relationship develops yeah and looks like and experiences that they go through yeah and so this book uh, is not anything like that book <laughs> <laughs> no but I imagine the writing right. is just yes. as great. And right. that mm -hmm. is exactly what is being said about the book is that it is not, it's everything that you love about this writer in terms of being able to tell the narrative tell and a be a storyteller. Yes. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with like that setting because this book actually takes place in three different time spans but also at the same time. So it's a 15th century um, Constantinople. Constantinople. Yes, exactly. Constantinople. Thank you. Something with the Turks. And 2020, Lakeport, Idaho, because they have the exact same thing in common and <laughs> 2146 uh in a futuristic ship and all of these main characters in each of those different locations are looking for this same transcript that is supposed to be providing them with key information that they need in order for their survival so I think it's going to be yes, yeah, just a really, story. It, yeah, and it actually sounds like something Riley would love as well. And um, I haven't read this book yet, so I'm excited. Yeah, I, I well, I mm -hmm. haven't even heard of it until we started talking about it. So mm -hmm. I love me a good story. Oh, yeah. and Stephanie says this piqued my curiosity. I'm so happy. Yay! 
Good. Oh, and look, Scott says, I hope the three of you have nothing scheduled for fall break except just <gasps> rest, rest and relaxation. I hope oh. so, too, but I think I have essays on my horizon. But I'm going to get oh. them corrected really quickly and I'm, then reading, 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 reading. I am for so enjoyment. excited for fall break. Me, too. I'm so excited. Oh, yeah? You're yeah, going to New you're York. Going. Yes. Yep. Yep. Just give I'm us a little going. spiel. A little spiel is that... Um, as you guys know, I officiate or can I do officiate weddings and my sweet friend, Katie, her oldest son and his sweetheart, Tila are getting married and I get to officiate. So we're going there. And then after Judd and I are going to spend a couple of days in the city. The Yay! city. The city means New Yay. York City. New York City. I love, rope. I love me some New York City. <laughs> well, I'm excited. I do oh, too. I love New yeah, York. Love and it. we are going to go see a show. <gasps> so this is exciting. Yeah, this is exciting. Yes. We just talked about this. Yeah, we just talked about it because I had said that there just wasn't really mm, anything I was interested yeah. in seeing. And what I wanted to see wasn't going to be playing until um, November. But I... I'm so excited. Um, Judd suggested let's go see To Kill a Mockingbird with <gasps> Jeff Daniels. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, he's coming back just because he loved, he, because his, his run on mm -hmm. it was over. So successful. And he, run. he just loves the part mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and mm -hmm. the reframing yep. of Atticus so much that he just felt so honored to be able to come back and yes. play it. Oh. And I love him as an <sighs> actor. There was just his role um, on, oh. Newsroom. Crap. Newsroom, thank you, thank Loved you, thank it. you. Loved it so, so much. And you know, then there's Dumb and Dumber. I know, it's so funny. And Dumb and Dumber goes back to Broadway. Um, yeah, yeah. It's so funny, it's, yeah, yeah. I just really, was so excited when Judd suggested this because I didn't realize it was coming back. Yeah. So that, that's I'm amazing. Like, yeah. So we got tickets oh to my go gosh. to that. So and excited. then a really cool jazz club that Judd and Ethan had gone to and both loved so very much. So we've got, we've got some things. Good. I'm very excited. So. Oh, I'm so excited. And you bought your tickets, not from somebody who's going to meet you on the corner of Broadway and something to pick them up. Nope. It is. Yeah. Don't deal. trust that. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, since Judd lived there, he kind of, you know, he got to be in charge of that stuff. So that's nice. Hopefully, hopefully you had that part already figured out that yeah. you don't buy from yeah. the mm -hmm. street corner. Yeah. Well, I didn't until I did. And now oh, I do. You actually. Oh, well, that yeah. was not no, like I a, did. that was yeah. a reality. Oh, moment. yeah. That was reality when we went to New York City. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, but lesson uh, learned. Lesson <laughs> learned. <laughs> and we won't talk about that right. anymore. So I just have to believe the person that stole that money from me needed it more than I needed it at the moment. But I didn't learn that lesson until many tears later. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so that's all right. Awful. That is awful. Yeah. So, so October. Yeah, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so we just wanted to take a little bit of time and talk about that a little bit. And um, make sure that everyone that's out there who is a survivor, that they know that um, we are holding you in a very warm embrace and congratulate you on that journey. And also to, for those of you who haven't experienced that, that there's a good chance that you know someone who has or you know someone who will be. And so... Uh, hopefully it won't be you, but if it is, then we also want to be in that conversation with you and then just create a space for conversation and some enlightenment around it and go from there. Excellent. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We were talking earlier and I didn't realize that um, the statistics were high, high as they were. It said one in eight women will be... Um, diagnosed. diagnosed with mm -hmm. breast cancer in their lifetime. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, we all know women. Those are huge numbers. Yeah. Huge. We all are women. Yep. We all are women. And also I, I love the, the mammogram vans that go around mm -hmm. that do free mammograms. Um, it's definitely a, a higher percentage in underserved populations. That are that don't have mammogram, they don't get oh, the yeah, screening, yeah, yeah. and people so, without insurance for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, or access to affordable like healthcare. affordable health care or yeah. can't get into town where mammograms are. Whatever right. the case is, it's, uh, the numbers are The higher. really great thing is that the American Cancer um, Association and uh, specifically the breast cancer arm of that, the breast cancer awareness arm of that, and other organizations have linked together to just do some fabulous work around making sure that everyone has access. Mm -hmm. right. So I think that if you, it, regardless of where you are, if you are a woman that does not have access under your health coverage, which I think if you have health coverage, you have access. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. they've lobbied for that. They've made sure that you have access. If you do not have coverage, then just contact. There's so many programs available to make sure that you can still have access to a mammogram, even if you do not have traditional types of health care coverage. So just co contact. You can contact any number of um, associations, but you can probably just contact your hospital and they'll be able to send you in the right direction in terms of who you can t contact to provide you with information around how you can get a mammogram. Mm -hmm. I think also, at least locally, um, women could contact the doctor's free clinic. Yeah. And for they sure. They would have information as to how to access a mammogram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that uh, even under the Affordable Health Care Act, mm -hmm. it's all covered under there. Right. There may be some age kinds of requirements, requirements uh -huh. yeah. but those will also be regulated by risk factors. So if you have additional risk factors, then your age qualifications will decrease as your risk factors increase. So it's just being aware around that and really being proactive for yourself and to really take it seriously because um, it really, a mammogram is a lifesaver, um, ladies. That's, that's just the truth of it. And I think sometimes people don't want to necessarily be tested because they think if they don't, if they're not tested, then no good, no news is good well, news. Right. But that that's just not true. Well, <laughs> right. No, and that's that's why regular mammograms help with early detection, of course, because then that's the yeah best treatable that space. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Yeah. They now and the and the mammograms now are three D, most generally three D, which has even better imagery, the slice images yeah. all the way through, they are definitely very effective mm -hmm. at earlier detection. Yeah. And I know there was um, some research that came out probably four or five years ago about there was a, a decreasing the age at which there was a suggestion at which women should start their mammograms. And I'm, I'm going to say that some, I'm guessing that maybe a lot of women were not in the conversation when those first recommendations <laughs> came out that we should de that we should increase the age at which you should really first start getting your mammograms, because when that came out, there was so much pushback yeah. about no, 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 you, you know that. You, that's real. That's really between a woman and their healthcare professional. Right, exactly. Given their risk factors about when that really should take place, mm -hmm. and the last thing we need is for CDC or anybody else to be coming out and saying, "No healthcare providers, insurance companies, you, we should be saying you shouldn't be covering a mammogram until somebody's." 55. What was the age? Was it 40? Because I, I know I ha started having them in my 30s. Yeah, I remember when it was 45. Okay. And then it lowered for, a, a you know, a couple of mm -hmm. times. And I have to be honest, I don't know where it's at right now. I well, don't... it went up, but it's really pretty much back down again okay. now. Yeah. So at 50 for sure. 
you should be having regular mammograms. I thought, I thought it was 40. I thought we should be having them at 40. Well, check with your, it, and there, like I said, there are a lot of factors that would go into that. So you would want to be, you would yeah, want to be checking. It sense. includes when did you have your first child and oh, right. yeah, that's how true. long There's have you been on birth mm -hmm, control? Right, yep. and Is there a history in your family? Yeah, sure, exactly. Sure. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's exactly so there's right. a whole, there's a whole bunch of risk factors. Well, not those aren't, oh, I, excuse me. Do I'm you not have even saying, boobs as a risk exactly. factor? Exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah. female. Yeah. yeah, I'm not even saying those are risk factors. Those they're are just, just, used, they're just factors. They're, they're just, just right. things to take into consideration. Right. The thing is about, but the reason you want to be proactive around it, folks, is because 255,000 women will be diagnosed with breast cancer this year. 255,000. Wow. 45,000 women will die this year of breast cancer. Wow. With all the advancements that have been made, we'll still lose 45,000 of our tribe to breast cancer um, this year. So it isn't, it is something that we, we still get to really uh, celebrate how far we've come in this journey. Right. And still recognize that there's really a long way still to go. And so, and mammograms are really 87%. There's 87% effective at being able to successfully diagnose breast cancer. So you can get some false negatives. I mean, some false positives in there. Here's the good news, though. Hardly anyone has a breast cancer procedure done after one potentially false positive. Oh, no, because they take, because even exactly. with a mammogram, if you have a positive or a, a concerning mammogram, they have you come right back. Yeah. Oh, they for sure. They have you come right back. And, and then an even ultrasound or the next step. Yeah, then mm -hmm. after that second mammogram, then they They'll do, do a biopsy. Ultra, well, they do the ultrasound do, uh -huh. and then they do the biopsy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you aren't going to go from one mammogram straight to a cancer diagnosis. That's not how it works. Yeah. Mm -mm. So, um, like I said, I think sometimes it's like, well, I don't want to get a mammogram because then I don't want to hear whether there's right. an issue. But, yeah, you do. You do. Because the sooner you hear that there isn't, then the more you don't even have to give that another thought in your brain until the next time it's time for you to go and get another healthy diagnosis from your mammogram. And if there is an issue, then you want to know that it you've been dealing with this issue for less than a year because your last mammogram was completely healthy. Right. So you want to know. And uh, Stephanie just my sister Stephanie just said that her good friend uh, Betsy just died last week from breast cancer um, and fought like a warrior because, man, those women do. My good friend is dealing with her third round of um, dealing with breast cancer, and she's fighting like a triple warrior, like she wow. is, right? So um, it's just you want to just be... If in, you're going to be in the battle, you yeah. want to know. You want to be able to. So that you can armor up. Yep. As soon as possible. Yep. Right? Absolutely. So um, it is most common for women who are over 50, although we are seeing plenty of diagnosis that are coming in. More. Yeah. Younger. Yeah. That's and I think I was... it's because, I think, honestly, that's because we're testing. So good. That's, Right. That, yeah, that's a really yeah. good point. Yeah. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. And I think you hear more and more about women who are choosing because of BRCA1 or BRCA2, which mm -hmm. means that they're carrying a genetic predisposition, more than a predisposition, Right. Um, that they're going to end up with cancer down the road. They have the genetic mutation that they are choosing a pro prophylactic approach to it and they're having a uh, mastectomy or bilateral mastectomy which just means that they're having both removed 
rather than waiting for a cancer diagnosis right. so right. that they have some mm -hmm. control over what that looks like. Um, and so I think we're seeing more and we're hearing more and more about that. And mm -hmm. I think those are all powerful conversations that are out there that we're talking about. Right. Important that that it's happening. Yeah. It's really important. But, and it's so brave. I um, can't imagine making that decision. But if I knew that was going to happen, I would I would think it through and maybe that I would do that, but it would, that would be like, I didn't have cancer yet, uh -huh. but it Deciding was going to happen. Yeah. So let's just yeah. do it. I mean, I, I think, yeah, I think a lot of us really, I mean, I, I don't know. I think that's hard. I'm not hung up around the boobs lady. Yeah. So no. if that means protecting me mm -hmm. long-term, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I really am okay with that. Yeah. And, you know, knock on wood. Sure. I won't ever have to make that choice. And if I did, I just, it's, I don't attach, you know, and everybody's different, right? Sure. Everybody's going to yeah. have their different level mm -hmm. of what makes me feel like me, what makes me feel like a woman, what makes me feel complete, all that kind of stuff. And I'd have to say my boobs are not it. Right. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> so, yeah. Nope. Um, and you know, I, so, um, I, I think maybe I mentioned this on one of the podcasts before I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, when we were speaking, when joy was here. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so that was, I, uh, I don't, 11 yeah, years ago. 13 years. Scott said it was okay. 13. Well, he probably knows because trust me, if you are married, or with a partner, your partner is going through your diagnosis every mm -hmm. bit as much as the person who has it or as much as they can go through it. Right. Um, and that the journey, it's just not an easy one, even in the moment when you're like, OK, I'm just going to put my head down. You know, I got this thing. Right. My mom is a um, breast cancer survivor. My grandmother at the time um, was a breast cancer survivor. So it wasn't something that um, was completely shocking. Um, I'm the oldest daughter in, in my family. So it wasn't completely shocking. I just barely turned 50. And so um, I wouldn't actually... I don't think I was 50 yet. Yeah, I was no. going to yeah. say you No, were, I wasn't 50 right. yet because I was below the age where they say, Go right. get now it. you should be testing yep. regularly. I was already getting mammograms because of family history. history and that's where they found it. <clears throat> I found out that it was actually breast cancer because I had gone in and they had um, done the mammogram. They found something. They had me go back in to have my biopsy done. And I got a call at work from the surgical unit to schedule my surgery. Oh, that's how you found out? That's how I found oh, out. Oh, So there was a little man. bit of a mix up there. Oh, that's, oh that is, gosh. that's hard. And so oh, that's wow. how, um, that's how I found out. I will say though, that the most difficult part initially was that waiting time between the biopsy and then the actual knowing where are we here once mm -hmm. once you know kind of then it's like all right now let's make let's plan. move to options mm -hmm. and see where we're going to go i had already told scott previously that if i ever did get a diagnosis like that we would act very aggressively sure given the family history but this also takes me back to the BRCA1 and 2 right. conversation because you have daughters and I have a daughter. So in the conversation, it isn't at that point, it isn't just a conversation about you. If I test myself for BRCA1 or BRCA2 and I carry the gene, then it isn't just about me now. It's also about my daughter. Right. Right. And if I test and then I know, then do I... Now, let your daughter share that with my young. daughter who is young. And, right. You know, what does that mean for her? 
Um, but certainly information is just information. And then they get to make the most informed choice that they get to make for their bodies. So I didn't have to test because my mom tested and she, she did had. not carry the gene. Oh. Here's the thing I would say about all of that. And I even talked about to my doctor about it. Um, we only found out about BRCA1 and 2 not that long ago. No, yeah, I was going right. to say. There's no way that it's just coincidence that my grandmother, my mother, and myself all had breast cancer. So yeah. down the road, you're going to find out that there's more than BRCA1 and 2. You, oh, you know, that there genetic, are other genetic right, markers. Mm -hmm. Well, and yeah. here's, here's a question. I, 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 I'm not sure, and that's why I'm asking. Um, can't the BRCA1 and 2 also be passed down to sons because they, too, males do get breast cancer yes, as well. Yes, they do. And mm -hmm. the percentage one of that is... One out of 100. Is, yeah, mm -hmm. one of that. And that percentage mm -hmm. is increasing yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I thought I had heard at one point that males could also get... The, yeah, it's genetic, the, so yeah. of course I think yeah. it can be... I just didn't know if it was a, a sex-linked chromosomal disorder or... I don't, I don't think it is, actually, but I can't speak to that. So if somebody's listening and they do know that... Um, Somebody quick do the Googles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can have breast cancer, um, like genetic predisposition, grandma, mom, you, mm -hmm. and not carry the BRCA1. That's, I believe that's, that's true. true. Yeah. yeah. So you're mm -hmm. still, it's still the genetic factors maybe that predisposed you for cancer, breast cancer. Yes, I think that. But it that... wasn't specifically the BRCA1. Yeah. Uh -huh. And like, like you said, I think that's an interesting comment though that, as the more we learn, especially mm -hmm. since there's not a uh, cure, the more we learn, then there's going to be found some other yeah down the road. What's connection. causing yeah mm -hmm. the damage Why to the are cell? The three of you mm -hmm. having yeah. that same experience. Yeah, and, and no so far it's good. So sisters? far, yep. So far it is um, good. Now my mom and my grandmother were both diagnosed quite a bit later in their years than yeah. I was with my diagnosis. I was Which makes significantly sense. Mm -hmm. younger in my diagnosis than they were. So we'll just, you know, continue to see how the rest of it, um, mm -hmm, how the rest of it plays out. But I did not know. I don't think you told us I, that I that's how you grandma. found out. Yeah, that's how I found out. I was that at they work called you when and, they and called said, me. Yeah. We need to schedule your surgery. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you My let your gosh. doctor know that's how you found out? Yeah. And here's here's the other thing I would say, too, is that there was so, uh, and I I was in California at the time, and I, and, and I can appreciate that we're talking about big corporations, corporations big agencies. you know, mm -hmm. but my surgeon was different than the doctor, so the, than the doctor who was, doing the initial removal. So I had a bilateral uh, mastectomy. So I had both removed, even though I only had the cancer in one. Um, so they did the removal and then the surgeon who was gonna do the, I had implants done at the same time of the removal. Well, not done at the same time. They start right. that process. So right. they put the stretchers in and that kind of stuff at the same time. So as they did the removal of all the breast tissue, then then she steps out and then he, the surgeon that was going to do the reconstruction, stepped in to start doing that process all in the same. All under, all under while the you same were under, anesthesia uh -huh. under yeah. that moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, I mean, that. That's Traumatic. some pretty significant, um, yeah, Major surgery. Trauma right there. And you're out like within 24 hours. Of the you're hospital. out of the hospital. It's Ugh. it's uh, you're uh, you're not ready. Well, honestly, you can't move. You've got drains everywhere. Um, and we could go into, but we probably won't. How you had to go through that recovery? Well, moving and being by yourself. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that, and that was totally a conversation that, you know, Scott had his, 
uh, had it. His dream vacation was already planned, and I insisted that he went. Yeah. Insisted yep. that he went because what? I mean, what? Right. Just watch me, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the the thing is, is that we also had a move planned, and so we moved. I think two weeks after you got here, yeah, my surgery, you 12 days, post. 12 days mm -hmm. post surgery. Yes. So, um, it, it was, it was stupid. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm, it was just stupid. Well, um, that's the thing when we're in our forties, thirties, twenties, we think, oh, we'll bounce back. We'll be fine. And we're strong women. And we, yeah, and I was for, all those things, and it yeah. was still stupid. Yeah, yeah for sure, yeah. looking well, back now. Honestly, but. though, I mean, at the time, in your head, you're ready just to get this done and move yep. on, and mm -hmm. this is going to be just fine, yep. and you're in a different mindset, mm -hmm. I would suppose. I just remember trying to get you to let us come and help. I know, and, and they were so, they were amazing. That yeah. was, you know, you were in the determined mode. Yeah. And so that probably comes from all the fear and anxiety and worry that comes with the diagnosis. Oh, yeah, for sure. And the one other thing that I would um, just encourage and really empower women and your partners around is I, I believe myself to be a strong, powerful, and empowered woman. And... I lost so much of my voice in the conversation. Mm, I gave my voice, so much of my voice, to, like, the male surgeon who was doing my reconstruction. I, I knew what I believe I wanted out of that process, and then he would say, no, you, you don't want that. And I just conceded to that. I just mm. was like, oh, okay, well, you probably know better, and I've got all this going on. And wow. I had to fly back and forth to Cal from Utah to California for a host of reasons to have the care done there. And I just gave my voice to him. And I would say to you be your best advocate you have earned that <laughs> at mm -hmm. the very least you have earned that and so much of of where you're going to be moving forward and how you see yourself and the eyes with which you see yourself moving forward not the rest of the world so this is just me talking to you and only you not anybody else has to even hear this conversation this is just me talking to you, if you're in this space or you ever find yourself in this space, you are the only one that's going to see you in the way you're going to see you. How anybody else sees you, that's them. But you are the only one that's going to see you how you're going to see you. So you have got to, you get to stand up and say, this is what it gets to look like for me to feel like me, whatever that is. And it's okay for you to be in that space and say, gosh darn it, nope. I know you may see it somewhere else, but this is what it gets to look like for me. And it's not only a-okay, you've earned that girl, mm -hmm. so ask for it. This is where my mom would say, Tawanda. Mm. Do you guys remember uh, Thelma and Louise? Yes, the yep. movie. Mm -hmm. And but I don't remember that. And uh, Thelma is telling Louise, "You've got this, Tawanda. Go mm -hmm. do it. Yeah, You've got this. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That was BJ. I love that. Saying that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the one last thing I would say here is that there the one of the beautiful things that comes from this journey is. Uh, one, it'll show you you're stronger than you ever knew. I mean, I, I will never invite this back into my life. And at the same time, I'll always be grateful for everything that it showed me that I, that I 
knew I was, but it reinforced that I was. So I will never give that gift back, even though I'll never invite that back into my life. But one of the other things that I think that it does is it gives me such a place of grace to be in a place to see and create a different experience and relationship than I would have ever maybe done before. For example, I, I, so don't hear this as a political statement, even though some of you probably will. I probably could not see myself um, in any kind of a space that Ron DeSantis in Florida, from a political standpoint, would ever see any kind of a kinship with. Right. But his young wife, Casey, is 41 and has three young babies, I think six and three and 18 months. And yesterday, it just came out, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. So I don't even, as far as I'm concerned now, the politics don't even matter because she is now part of this kinship. She gets my prayers and grace and that whole family now gets something that I don't know that I could have ever or would have ever given before. Right. But now it totally is a different Once you get conversation the membership in to my the club. head. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you have a friend that had just gone through something this had breast cancer maybe lived in Arizona and had a double mastectomy Mm -hmm. right around that time Mm -hmm. frame yeah and was it before yours or after yours after after Mm -hmm. and her your bravery helped her bravery oh that's right yeah that's right yeah good memory Patty I I can't remember my kids names but I thought that one (laughs) well that one obviously touched you yeah Uh, because I remember that decision was like instead of go through cancer treatment, like chemotherapy. I'm, all of it. Yeah, just I'm not going to go through all of this. Yep. Let's just yep. cut to the chase. Cut both uh-huh. off. Yep. And what are the chances do you, if for breast cancer to come back without breast tissue? Um, it's, it's very unlikely. I mean, I always get a notice, which just it makes me laugh. I always get a notice back um, about... Uh, you need to have your mammogram. (laughs) And I'm like, you are my insurance provider. You know my medical history. You, right. Right. So you still want to be testing for other things like uterine cancer. You're more, you checking lymph nodes. You need to be checking those kinds of things because it's a soft tissue cancer. So you do need to be aware of those kinds of things. Uh, but I'm not going to get breast cancer back because I don't have any breast tissue. Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. That's what I meant. But by you that. do want to be checking your lymph nodes, and there are other things. You know, I do mm-hmm. have lymphedema, which is a result of having your lymph nodes um, removed as part of your cancer uh, treatment and those kinds of things. But. And what does lymphedema cause? What are the uh, It means about? your lymphatic system is unable to remove some of the toxins. Okay. So, you know, you're supposed to wear those cute sleeves, all the... The compression sleeves. The compression yeah. sleeves, and it causes swelling in your the extremities. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it needs help. Your system needs help removing those toxins. Well, good thing you don't ever put any in your body. That's exactly right. (laughs) (laughs) So we need to save the tatas by early detection. Yep, early Early detection. Mammograms. Yep, early mammograms. Be checking for symptoms. Here's the thing, you know, if you have an obvious symptom, you you're doing breast exams. Um, you're touching yourself. Mm-hmm. That's what I say. Only only Uh when I think about you. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I. You're welcome. Um, why didn't we sing it? I then, don't even know why we didn't sing it. I actually karaoke that song once in Florida. Wow. <laughs> you want to be doing those kinds of things. If you have a discharge then from your nipple that um, that's other than breast milk, which is, and you should be discharging that. But even if you have blood in your um, discharging milk and you should be discharging milk, you want to have that 
checked out, mm -hmm. if they're sore for an unknown reason, and you want to have under that your arm. under your arm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of times if you have a um, swollen, a swollen lymph, 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 lymph yep. node. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you won't have any symptom. Right. That's why your mammogram is really, really important. Mm -hmm. And yeah. those with um, high fibro masses. Yeah, I have very dense I, yeah. breasts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. That's, That's why it's difficult yeah. to find one through a self examination. Even my doctor could not. Right. They're like, yep, they're lumpy yep. in there. Yep. That's why <laughs> I do like having my mammogram that they they judge from. For, you know, each yeah. one because mm -hmm. that's the same for me. Yep. Do you know that I had a doctor once that I no longer have? I actually don't think he, I think he lost his medical license. But I was there for my annual exam and you lay down and they touch your breasts. And he said, you know, the thing, the good thing about you not having any breast tissue of your own. I mean, <laughs> of your own. I don't Being even so have flat. any, so I don't Do have, have somebody, somebody else's. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have anybody's, but the good thing about you being so flat is if you had a tumor, we could see it. What? Oh. Thank you. He was being ridiculous. Yeah. Wow. And but, did you pretend that he hit your kneecap and your knee yes. shot right up and hit him right yeah. in his privates? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And did you say it's a good thing you don't have any Something hanging there, or that would have really hurt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> crazy. Um, go get your mammograms. <laughs> yeah, go get your mammograms. Go get your squish. That's what BJ yep. called it. Yep. And got to get your squish. Kim yep. Michelle, thank you for being so brave. Oh, yeah. Thank you well, for and thank you for sharing you your story. Right. Yep. I know that there being such an example to are, all of us. Yep. Are, there are people out there that needed to hear that from you. Well, thank you and. Um, for being so gracious and the two of you uh, always uh, being so loving and they were here to greet me and just really. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. There's All a month lot of long. things that you Be can aware. do. Yep. October 22nd. Do donate. yourself exams. Pink day mm -hmm. is October 22nd. Yep. Uh, the whole month, right? Mm -hmm. Blush, pink, whatever. But the 22nd particular in particular is wear your pink ribbon and buy pink. Buy pink because it helps raise funds. That's how we, that's how mammograms are paid for, for people who can't afford them, uh, all kinds of things. Just make sure that you're buying pink from someone where the majority of the proceeds are going to the beneficiaries, not uh, some minor percentage yeah. and that the company is keeping the bulk of it. So you That's, can go online, yeah. they'll they'll tell you, they'll proudly tell you if the bulk of uh, their Donations. product uh -huh, is going towards the Cancer Association. Yep, and um, tell your loved ones, remind yep. them to get mammograms All of them. too. Mm -hmm. All of them. Yep. Thank you for listening. Yes, we'll see you next week. Yes, we appreciate week. you. Read the book. Happy week, everyone. Yeah, thank you, Cloud Cuckoo Land. Woohoo! That sounds cuckoo. Thanks for listening to It's a Great Day to Talk. Be sure to follow and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform. And until next week, get, get out there and talk. This has been a production from A Podcast Studio.